Now, working on the sea is dangerous enough, working under it very much more so. But in fact, Dublin's very quaysides were built by builders operating from a diving bell. Now, some of the men who worked in it are going to preserve that diving bell for posterity. Like, they put out with the word, anybody want to work on the bell, and some of them have had a bit of claustrophobia. They found themselves in this chamber, three men huddled together, you know, and this air being pumped in. And some of them didn't like that, but any of them that got in usually stuck it out, you know. On Sir John Rogerson's quay in the heart of Dublin stands one of the most unusual pieces of maritime engineering ever devised, the Dublin Diving Bell. No matter what way we look at it, to design that thing in the 1800s and to see it having been used up to 1959 is a masterpiece because nowhere in Europe that I know of has a diving bell like that. They can get down 42 feet, 20 foot square, and blow the water out that five men can walk in reasonable comfort at their operation. The Keys of Dublin are full of the history of maritime development along the Liffey, an impressive history of which the Dublin Diving Bell is an integral part. Built by Grendon and Company of Drogheda and delivered to the Port of Dublin in 1866, where it was used for 92 years in building and repairing the key walls as the port was developed. Men descended into it through a series of airlocks. The bell was lowered onto the riverbed, forming a chamber in which the men worked on the mud, compressed air keeping out the water. On a cold autumn day as the wind whipped up the Liffey, John O'Reilly remembered for me his days as supervisor of the crew which worked the diving bell. Well it was hard pick and shovel work, oh definitely was. And we had to load up this stage with maybe three, five tons of whatever was down there and bring it out and we'd open the stays that we had it on and let it drop down on the bottom out cleared at the berth to one side, either side of the berth. But that, that normally didn't take very long. You'd be back digging again in half an hour. Well, we were working under compressed air, you see. We were at, working at 45 feet below high water. And we were under 20 pounds a square inch, which could be a bit serious if your ears were in bad condition or you had a cold. And one of the men actually burst an eardrum and he could whistle through his ear. If he held his nose, you could hear him whistle. The memories of other men who worked in the bell, some of whom have passed away, is still strong for the proud inner city community of Dublin around Ringsend, Pier Street and the Grand Canal area, where there's a strong maritime tradition. This community is now leading a project to restore the diving bell as part of Dublin's history. They gathered at St Andrews Resource Centre for the formal launching of the project, which is being supported by FOSS, the Dublin Docklands Development Authority and the Dublin Port Company. Well, there's a long history of, of uh, the diving bell in Dublin Port. Uh, it was used for construction of the port. We use different methods now, but we would like to keep that and uh, to keep the connections with the past, because very, an awful lot of the port is still old and uh, although we have modernised it now, uh, much of it was built, in fact, by men using that particular bell. John O'Reilly and his colleague Joe Murphy, a diver and great maritime figure from Ringsend, were the last supervisors of the working of the Dublin diving bell. And they looked over the bell in which they'd once worked, a time when men had to be tough to level the riverbed by hand and help build the key walls of Dublin. I think the health and safety people wouldn't allow such a thing to operate today. Uh, they were tough men, there's no doubt about it. It's not very many volunteers for it. In fact, there's, there's a, a very small percentage of men volunteered for it. And on my first experience of it, it wasn't very pleasant when, the, when you turned on the compressed air. Because I was used to the diving suit with the hard helmet, you know, which you could control yourself. But with the, this airlock, you couldn't, you, couldn't, you couldn't control it. Once you start compressing, you had to go the whole way. There's no going back. Technology of other times. That ends the programme for this evening. Do join us again at the same time on Wednesday next, 7 o'clock, just before Coronation Street. Until then, from Limerick, 
and from your nationwide team. A very good evening to you.